Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Tuesday, October 23rd, 2018. Uh, another volatile day in the markets. Uh, again, uh, this is just the new norm recently, uh, so not anything that we haven't seen lately, although today was impressive, I'll give it that, uh, quite the reversal in the markets. Uh, but but before we get into the intraday charts, and then there's a couple charts I haven't showed yet, I want to post those. Um, let's just take a look at what happened. and, and uh, if you've actively traded, you watch the reversal. We were down very big in the morning, followed by a big reversal, one of the bigger reversals we've seen in a while. But at the end of the day, and all that matters is price action, especially if you're not an active, you know, a day trader. Uh, if you're just a swing trader, um, the bears won. Uh, the market was down. This is the Dow. I'll just go through the major uh, tracking ETFs. The Dow was down uh, half a percent. And as you can see there, here's that key 200 day moving average, the exponential moving average. Uh, we continue to uh, flirt with it. So, you know, there's still, as I say, there's still some some key moving averages that are close within very close range. We're a little bit below it now, but all we need to really see here or all that really matters is what happens by the end of the week, both because we'll get the weekly candlestick closes, which mean more. Um, and the uh, those big fang stocks that are reporting this week, uh, like uh, Alphabet and um, Amazon and Intel, they're all going to report. So we're going to see some market movement. But as of now, there's the Dow. Let's look at the large caps first. S&P 500 uh, still down uh, half a percent. There it is, 0.53. Uh, there's that little trend line there. Uh, let's see, QQQ, you know, with tech stocks, saw a rally today. They were, you know, one day they're down the most, the next day they're up. So we still closed down 0.3, three tenths of a percent. And then we look at the mid caps real quick, just trying to cover all the spectrums here of the market. Uh, down 1%. You know, there's a little doji hanging out there, so maybe a potential reversal stick. But again, you look at the big picture here, and these are red candles again for the third day. I've talked about these uh, potential bear flags recently, and so yet you have another impulsive day of selling. Doesn't matter what the turnaround was, uh, they closed red. We closed with red sticks today, uh, and again, I should have showed you that on the spy as well. So there it is. So uh, that's that's the bigger picture. Uh, I know there's a, just a lot of buzz, especially within the trading room from the reversal, but. It's what I, we came coming into the week expecting, or I came coming into the week expecting with the big earnings on the way. We're very oversold. Volatility is already high to begin with, so these these big intraday swings are really the norm recently. Uh, that was MDY. I think I just covered that for you. And then the small caps, uh, IWM, Russell 2000. Uh, so that's that, and that's bigger picture. And let me just show you one more thing, bigger picture, that I have not showed in a while. Uh, I took these. These were screenshotted. Uh, I took these screenshots uh, about a little after 3:30 today. Uh, so the VAT closing, they're not reflecting of the reflective of the closing values. I was using another charting program that's not as easy to shrink down. This is stockcharts.com. It's an old antiquated charting system. It has some benefits, so I keep an account there, a subscription, but you can't really resize the charts like you can on a lot of the other programs. So uh, I wanted to squeeze it in here, and here's here's. I wanted to share this because it's a clean chart. I know a lot of the charts that I show you have trend lines, support resistance levels, Fibonacci retracements, this, that, and the other. This is a pure chart, very clean. And uh, what stands out to me, and I've covered it many times, but I want to just reiterate, the downtrend line off the early 2016 lows, there it is, very clean, a lot of reactions along here, a big divergent high right there, and a clear breakdown. And what I've done, I really have to struggle hard to find uh, any type of, um, you know, an alternative trend line. But I've done that because you have to give it the benefit of the doubt. You know, the primary trend is still bullish. So there's an alternative trend line I have. And maybe we're going to catch support there. You can see it's a dotted line below there. And on the other charts, again, the reason I have all the other trend lines, there is horizontal support. Uh, there are some levels along here. Uh, none very significant from my experience when you have a pretty big breakdown like we've had recently. Um, you know, these clear breakdowns, that's not working. Okay, and uh, to wrap this video up, since this is real short, we're only at the four and a half minute mark, uh, I'll just go through the same market leading stocks, the big fang stocks that I've been covering recently, and that gives gives us should give us some clues to where this market's heading. So Apple. Apple has, has really done absolutely nothing for days now. This goes back to the, you know, the about the, uh, at least a week or so here. And you can see a couple weeks. 
sideways trading range boxed in and all we did today if you zoom in uh, we went down we tested once again the bottom of that range around 215 rallied right up to the top parked it right there at the close at the uh, that uh, resistance level and you can see it here again I covered it recently on the 15 minute charts this was the only one that broke out above its downtrend line out of the big market leading stocks the FANG stocks the top components of QQQ and uh, so we broke out yesterday, ran up to the top of the range, failed, came back to the bottom of the range, and rallied right back up to the top again. So uh, whatever. We'll see. If Apple breaks out, it's building up some energy here. I'll give it that. But there's key support to the downside if broken, which is bearish. Uh, anything to the upside. But keep in mind, if you trade Apple or whatever the market does with Apple for the next week or so, they report next week. And um, yeah, Apple's going to move one way or the other after the earnings report. And based on the outlook of long-term charts, I still favor more downside regardless of what happens here over the next week or so. Uh, and if that changes, I'll let you know. I uh, didn't mean to jump away from a 15-minute time frame. Let's wrap this video up looking at the rest. Amazon, uh, same trend line I showed yesterday. Failed and parked it again. I showed it when it was down here today that's where they parked at the close so they're keeping everybody guessing maybe all these uh fang stocks pop tomorrow uh, but until unless they do like i like to say resistance is resistance until unless taken out and so that simply acts as an objective shorting uh op when you get a pushback to resistance in a downtrend uh, there's microsoft below this symmetrical triangle and tried to backfill a gap, couldn't do it. So Microsoft was still down pretty big, 1.33%, and they are one of the stocks reporting this week. Tells me that investors or the uh, you know institutions, institutional and or retail investors are maybe a little nervous right now. Uh, again, nice recovery rally, but it's still you're down 1.33%. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. Uh, G O O G Alphabet. Uh, you have this downtrend line, and on G O O G L, that's the one most people trade. I think Class A shares. Uh, there it is. Parked it right around the downtrend line. And uh, we can go down the line. Facebook's been dead for a while. There's some Cisco's not doing much. Intel, they're coming up to report this week as well. Another one down 1.1% today. Yeah, and just to wrap it up, since we're only seven minutes into the video, we'll wrap it up with the weekly charts. Again, I keep updating these. Not a lot happens. And all that really matters is how we close the week. So there it is. Uh, so far, intraweek, we're forming a doji stick. Jo dojis are indecision sticks. You can see, you know, we're we're towards the higher end of this week's range. But today is only Tuesday, so we can't take too much into this. All I can say uh, with certainty is that uh, the cues are clinging to this support level like a, you know, like a sailor overboard clinging to a lifeboat. Uh, you know, last couple times we hit it, it was off to the races. Uh, this time around, we came to it, we've stuck to it like glue. It's a key level, it's a key battleground between bulls and bears. And um, you can see now the 200 day is starting to roll down, flatten out. 200 day is a little below the primary uptrend line right now. And we'll just have to see how this week closes. And uh, I'm, I'll tell you what, I can't wait. Uh, with all these big earnings on deck and there's spy there's a the long term this trend line you can zoom all the way out if i want back to 2009 where it starts but uh spy is in oh hit the pause button by mistake a bearish technical posture it has broken last week you know we had that stick save through two weeks ago uh last week we closed below the long term bull market uptrend line uh and and closed to put a doji right on the 40 week moving average and so far this week we're below it after dipping quite a bit below it so um, you know anything's possible this market needs to uh, giddy up soon and get back above those levels I just I don't think it's gonna do it but we'll see and there's your 60 minute bullish falling wedge when you look at those divergences on spy uh, best looking long setup I've seen in a long while I'm just I'm, uh, I'm suspicious of it and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, there's also, like I said, quite a bit of resistance. And, you know, this, this could play out, but we could also come down and simply, you know, make another low, work our way down within here. And that's still my preferred scenario. Come in at lower levels. I'd like to see some divergences when when my um, my downside targets in the broad market are hit. But uh, we'll watch this. If they take out that down, downtrend line, it's certainly going to pop some stops and suck in some longs. Uh, so we'll see if it sticks or not. All right, well, um, those are the levels to watch, and we'll, we'll see what happens from here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. I hope you enjoyed it.